wrapping up ATS&J 2023 this year was a really fantastic session led by Kip Patterson. And not only was it the the, um, the lecture he did uh, during the general session, but he also gave a lab during the student session this year, which was fantastic. And Kip was presenting on what he refers to as the Jepster tape strapping procedure um, for the treatment of medial posterior tibial stress syndrome, um, or as we call them, shin splints, uh, that, that mysterious, lovely condition that we all love to, to deal with. And, you know, Kip, thank you for sharing your perspective on your kind of the why behind what, what, what led to this tape job, um, what your research has shown in terms of the different levels of, of severity of shin splints and kind of your approach to that. And so let's talk about that a little bit. You know, before we do, Kip is the athletic trainer and the strength and conditioning specialist. You know, he's also the CSCS at Shawnee High School here in New Jersey. And, you know, Kip, getting into it, this 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 shin splint, this this mystery condition, what must we keep in mind as athletic trainers in terms of likely causes? And I love how you talked about the four stages, the four levels of severity that you use to qualify it. Can you speak to that a little bit as well? Sure. Uh, once again, thanks for having me on, uh, Ryan. I really appreciate that. Um, so basically, um, the causes when and, and early in my career, kind of seeing kids that came in and it's just um, the constant flow and that we're finding that more and more kids suffer from this and but there was no complete answers. So, um, so things that may cause that, it could be their shoes, if they're running with sneakers, if they're getting the proper support in those sneakers, or if it's cleats, uh, a lot of times just the footwear that they are wearing is not really um, helping their condition. Uh, what kind of surfaces are they running on, whether it be, you know, some of our kids through the woods, on the track, uh, on a court, uh, on grass, um, and now we have uh, turf over the last couple of years, and I'm, I'm seeing the increase of shin, ankle, knee issues developing even from that uh, type of setting. So um, you're looking at conditioning, uh, whether they have over conditioning uh, uh, situation or if they have under conditioning situations. So um, and then a lot of times um, just addressing uh, the different problems with um, overtraining of, of the coaches and trying to talk with them and trying to help them not just pound them day after day after day after day, but to give them some rest in between. And uh, that helps set them up for a better situation uh, either the next day or, or the following day um, by addressing those kind of things. So as far as stages, um, normally you have your first stage, which may be pain during activity, but goes away after you warm up and then um, is controllable. Second stage, you start moving into where it disappears during the warm up, uh, but then comes back later, and they might still have that pain in in their shins. And then the third stage, where it gets gets worse and worse during activity. Now those first, probably first and second, but even to the early parts of that third stage, you can possibly do something about it. But when they start getting to that fourth stage, where it's just pain at night, pain during activity. Um, and pain all the time. And that's what I was calling the last stop on that pain train, where it's probably definitely a stress reaction, if not a stress fracture. So um, what I what you ideally would like to do is catch that person in the first and second stages if they're smart enough to come to you and ask for help. But a lot of times I'm not seeing, especially our track kids, we're not seeing them come in to the hand me a note with a boot on their foot. And that's the first <laughs> we've found out about it. So um, if you can start to educate them and when you first start hearing hints of uh, an issue, um, you know, start looking at the problem and try to give them some hope. Yeah, and I appreciate how you, you spoke to the importance of collaborating with the coaches on this, especially if you're working with, with kids who are deconditioned or those other environmental aspects, those training uh, related uh, aspects that, that lead to this the importance of having that relationship with the coaches so that they can potentially get some constructive feedback from you about sure. warm-up programs or training approaches having that great relationship with your coaches allows you to have those more difficult conversations if you have a little bit of a concern with the way they're coaching or the way they're conditioning the team or right. the ramp up in the beginning so I, I appreciate that you spoke to that but let's say it happens let's say you you get that that, that inflammation and you know you discovered this tape job kind of tell us first you know how did you come about this name, the Jepster? Because I thought that was right. story was really cool. And then 
how do we apply this in a case where, you know, you've seen some really great results with with helping um, to to keep that stages down or to get rid of it? Walk us through that. OK, as as healthcare professionals, we have many um, treatment plans or modalities available available to us for uh, treating things. So, um, you know, and we'll probably talk about some of those modalities in a little bit. But I've, as athletic trainers, uh, as they say, we, we tape angles and save lives. So what's that key modality that we do have is taping and strapping and, and taking care of the athlete with kind of an external um, benefactor to uh, the condition. So um, many years uh, in the practice and the, the taping procedure we have was an open basket weave mm -hmm. in the shin to support. Um, looking at there, there's, you know, those uh, compression sleeves. You see all these runners having these compression sleeves on. And basically what that's doing is actually make the condition worse because you're now having that heat in that area and making that hypertrophied area uh, overheat and, and cause problem. So, um, you know, the frustration of, you know, athlete after athlete walking in and, you know, are we shutting them down? Are we able to do something? How can we get them to limp along? And I saw the increase of high level athletes that we need to have on the field um, because of the uh, turf that they were, you know, having this uh, condition and having this issue. So what do we do about it? So um, finally, one day, my daughter walked in and said, hey, dad, my shins are killing me. And, you know, I, I can, I'm having trouble. And first I was like, you know, great. Thanks. Thanks for, you know, giving me a heads up before it got too bad. But, you know, she's running, you know, cleats because that's practice and, you know, play, trying to play lacrosse. So um, I kind of went home and thought I, I got to figure out something. So that night, restless night, as we all do as athletic trainers, usually we're awake from two to four in the morning uh, trying to think how we can do things better and um, kind of came up with thinking through um, what's the problem? What are these stressors? How can we address them? And how can we avoid making the problem worse? So it was at that point, um, I figured I could begin this experiment because it's my child, I don't need to sign off on it. And she's gonna give me exact feedback, honest feedback, unfortunately, unfiltered feedback. And you know, usually, you know, your own child will tell you, no, dad, this, this sucks, this doesn't work. But she was like, wow, I'm actually getting some relief. So. It wasn't really a uh, magic, but it was over the course of a couple of days where she starts to feel that relief where it was taking that stress off of, I was kind of calling it the Bermuda Triangle at the conference off of that, um, you know, that arch that um, in fact, by part we're near the navicular of the foot. Mm -hmm. So that's what we were able to do. So um, can you want me to explain? Yeah, uh, to how we, how we Jeff, sir, that was, you're named after your daughter, right? So yeah, so yeah, yeah. Jo uh, Joanna Elizabeth Patterson. So one of her one of her many nicknames was Jepster. <laughs> so uh, so I figured I'd name it after her since she was the you know the the point uh, the catalyst to kind of get this thing going. So fantastic, um, fantastic. And then so, yeah, yeah, speak to yeah. real quick. So you know the supplies you use and kind of those those steps of of uh, applying the tape job. Okay, so uh, what I used was what I had on hand, and we had. Um, Pro's choice uh, stretch adhesive. Um, and that was usually your base layer. So basically we're using that to um, almost like a figure eight around the ankle and then into the arch down to um, the um, you know, metatarsals there. And just to kind of protect the arch from where mm -hmm. the next step will be. Uh, and then at the top of the um, lower leg, um, just below the tibial and above the calf in that area there, we, we would then secure uh, that adhesive stretch wrap above there, leaving that meet, mid part of that shin open to be able to get air and cool off uh, as needed. Then we would use um, the elasticon. I was using about a two inch wide. Uh, we found uh, was enough uh, where it's not too wide of a band. And basically we would split the top of the elasticon and attach that just below the, the lateral malleolus and we would put that foot in that inversion and bring that uh, um, elasticon through the arch, lifting it, and then bringing up the shin, riding that elasticon along the uh, shin bone between the shin bone and the calf and that little groove right through there and replicating the uh, deep compartment because uh, that's the muscles that are running right under that, um, that navicular arch right through there. Um, and supporting the foot. And all that trauma 
is flexing that foot. So even when we would use an orthotic, um, it was supporting the arch, but it's not keeping that flex happening or, st or keeping that from uh, aggravating and irritating the area, which would then on that flat band that's right across the shin would irritate. So we're gonna attach that just above the calf, below the tibial, and we split the top and wrap it around the top of the calf there also. And then we just lock that down with the stretch wrap. And uh, another point with the Elasticon, I call it the Goldilocks principle. So it's not too tight, it's not too uh, loose where you're not getting any support, but you're not cutting into that foot. So, um, and then, uh, so we attach it at the top and then bring that foot from that inversion where you taped it back into that flat neutral position. And then uh, once again, uh, like a figure eight system in three arch, uh, locking in that elasticon. So we want to do two of the elasticon because as the Navy SEALs say, two is one, one is none. <laughs> uh, and we want to support that and then, you know, lift and hold that arch. So basically as you're running, that flex is not to as great a degree as it has been and it's basically replicating like we do with an ankle tape job or we do with you know a knee tape job you're replicating what god has already given us and you're just trying to hold it a little bit better for that athlete because they are not only just running linear but they're cutting and and change their direction and in, in the, the force on that area is tremendous could be two three or, or more times the body weight Absolutely. And and Kip, if you send me that video that you showed in that presentation, I'll make sure to have a link for it in the show notes as well for people okay, to, to okay. check out the finished product because it was really a, a great application. Let's wrap things up with, in addition to this, this awesome Jepster tape job, what are some other real specific areas athletic trainers should focus their care when it comes to addressing medial, tib medial tibial stress syndrome? Okay. So as, as you know, this is, and I, and I talked to a couple of the other peers, and this this is not magic you know we, we're I, I said we we're sports medicine wizards we try to defend science we try to um inc increase the timeline for science but obviously you have that healing process so we use different modalities and our hands ice you know these are the things that you know simple things that we have at our at our disposal to use but you know if you have you know uh exercise bikes stationary bikes we're trying to get the athlete off their feet and off that impact so if they're in that latter stages it gives them an opportunity to get that aerobic workout but yet not stress you know the the parts that are, are getting overstressed or, or abused um, we're going to be using if you have an ultrasound so you're treating that area uh, to try to uh, bring in uh, nutrients decreased inflammation and like i shared with you know the students if we're seeing pain with that ultrasound that's your cheap x-ray right there. You know that they're having pain in that shin. So you're probably dealing with probably a stress fracture or stress reaction. So that's an indication there. But if you're not, you can use it as a treatment modality. Um, I use muscle release. And this is a, a course, a couple of courses I've taken. And if you haven't taken one, I highly recommend it. And that's using your hands to release that muscle tension and those, um, uh, you know, the, just to get that hypertrophied muscle to finally relax. Um, and then we use uh, game ready because we have it, but basically almost hang the person uh, with the legs up the up the wall and use that pumping action with the cold to help reduce uh, some of that swelling. Because sometimes you get on there to do hands on and you, you can't even do anything because the swelling so bad. Yeah. So, you know, there's different things we can do to to treat the symptoms, obviously address the problems try to avoid training problems, but then when they get into our room, you know, there are things we can do stretching. We can work on pliability of those muscles. So it, um, if it's a muscle imbalance, you're looking at those things and addressing those along with applying our modality. You know, when you do a tape, an ankle tape procedure, mm -hmm. you've already done your ankle training. You've already gotten that person so they're functional, but then that tape is just an addition to help them compete and hopefully Give them an upper hand on the on the playing field. Awesome, Kip. Thank you uh, for sharing your your insights. You know, you you MacGyvered the situation and you made it work, and now we can all <laughs> learn from that. So um, that's what we do. Yep, that's right. So thank you again. Your contact information is in the show notes. If anybody wants uh, to, to reach out to you with any further questions, again, we'll have a video for the the uh, the tape application as well in the show notes. And uh, again, thank you so much for bringing that to ATS and J 2023, Kip. 
thank you so much. And uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Have a great Absolutely. day. Thanks for having me on, Ryan. Appreciate it. You got Take it. Take care. All right. So what we're going to do is put down your base layers around the, just below the knee and then around the foot. Try to get that arch in there. And then you want to cut your elasticon. Have the person turn their foot to the inside. Split your elasticon right under the malleolus there. And then you might want to come around the inside. And catch that arch. Split your top. Anchor to the just below kneecap and just above the calf. Another one just in front. Once again, lifting up that arch. So there's enough tension on the elasticon to lift that arch, but not too much that you're cutting into the arch or causing that ankle to go into too much eversion or inversion, excuse me. Lock it down. And then do the Vaughn pinch. And there you go.